put another notch on the belt of the Tesla S. Elon Musk reporting that his electric car has set new safety records by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. It's Tuesday, August 20th. Welcome to Lunch Break. I'm Wendy Bounds. Here to explain what has unfolded is WSJ's Aldo's reporter, Mike Ramsey. He's in Detroit. Mike, thanks for being here. Uh, we should stress that these are this is, uh, this is information we're getting from Tesla right now at this point. What's the headline on what they're putting out about their safety ratings? Okay, so the first thing is a couple weeks ago, NHTSA came out and gave uh, the Model S uh, five stars across the board in the four different areas that you can um, get star ratings from the safety agency. And that's as high as it goes. Very few cars achieve five stars in, in all four areas. Um, but what Tesla is coming out with is that they have analyzed the data from a separate statistic that actually shows um, you know, the individual performance on each of these tests. And they've come out uh, with, with this analysis that shows the Model S has performed better than any vehicle ever tested under the new safety standards that, were, uh, that came out in 2011. So they, are, you know, they came out and, and uh, as you said, Elon Musk last night said it's the safest vehicle ever and um, kind of detailed some of the reasons why. Uh, certainly, you know, uh, we have not verified this yet with NHTSA, but there are a lot of reasons to, to believe that um, it's likely true. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it, like you said, it's another uh, notch in the belt for the Model S. And, you know, earlier this spring, they, uh, the Tesla S named the top scoring, scoring car for consumer reports. Uh, so yet again, as I was saying, another notch in the belt. Let's talk specifics about how the design of this electric car uh, might help it achieve these safety standards. Mike, uh, talk to us uh, in layman's terms about how not having a gasoline engine block would help the car in crash scenarios. Okay, well, as you know, uh, most cars have a very heavy engine mounted in the, um, in the front of the vehicle. And the big reason that this is, uh, you know, in old cars from the 50s that weighed a ton of money, or weighed a, a, a ton and looked like they were tanks, if you hit them from the front, they weren't designed with crash zones. So the engine would fly into the compartment. And so if you went on a head end crash in a, you know, a 58, um, you know, Chevy, you're probably in, not going to make it. A new car, the vehicle is designed to have crumple zones that that deform and crumple and absorb the energy from a head-on crash. Well, in the case of a Model S, this which is an all-aluminum vehicle, you have a vehicle that has no engine in front. It's like a, a luggage compartment. So there's a very large area to crumple before, you know, the and to disperse the energy before it gets into the cabin. From the side, they've used special um, Aluminum extrusions on the pillars, they call them, those are the kind of beams that go up the side of the vehicle that make it very safe from a side impact. Um, of course, it has airbags like all other cars do. Uh, and from the rear of the vehicle, they actually um, have an option if you have the third row jump seat, which is a kind of a, a spot where kids could sit. If you get that option, they put it and install a second bumper uh, that basically makes it very difficult to to uh, you know, injure, get injured from the rear, and and lastly, the the way the structure is designed, the roof crush structure, right. it, it's very very hard to crush from the top. But more importantly, the center of gravity on the vehicle is incredibly low. There's a 1,000 pound battery pack that's in a large rectangle that's on the base of the car. It's almost impossible to flip a car like this, just you know, based on physics. It would it would require a, you know almost a forklift to to flip it over. Mike, a lot of buzz about this rollover uh, test and, 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 and Tesla reporting that the piece of equipment that was testing it, that actually it, it broke. What do you make of that? Well, you know, it, it's hard to know. Like, you know, just as a journalist reading something like that, it's hard to know whether the roof was that strong or whether the equipment failed during the test. But I think needless to say that the bigger issue is in a car like this, a rollover is going to be almost impossible to to happen anyway. So if the roof is that strong, um, you know, it's it's a nice backup, but the fact of the matter is it's going to be almost impossible to roll this over. It's much more likely to have an accident uh, in a car like this because it's so fast and someone's driving way too fast for conditions and runs off the road or something than to, than to flip it over. All right, last quick question to you, Mike. Do you think that, cons how much do consumers pay attention to this? I mean, will, thi will this help the Tesla brand? Does the Tesla brand actually need help at this point? 
Well, you know, here's the thing is, that what I would say is that if it, if, if it performed very poorly, the inverse of this is you wouldn't, you know, it definitely wouldn't help the brand. It would be something that would say, oh, well, I like a Tesla, but they, they for, you know, they score very poorly. It certainly does not hurt to score the highest ever in consumer reports for a test drive, the highest ever by NHTSA and safety. When you start putting those things together, when someone says, is it worth it to spend $80,000 on the car? You say, well, if it's the safest car ever made and it's one of the highest scoring cars ever made, maybe it is worth it. All right, Mike Ramsey, we'll continue to follow your reporting on this issue throughout the day. Appreciate you being with us.